Hello, chic lovers. In our previous session, we explored the key components of an chic machine, compression and fragmentation on one side and reassembly and decompression on the other. We learned that both ends share the same set of rules, each identified by a short rule ID. Today, we'll dive deeper into the compression process. Let's see what's inside the chic machine. When compressing a packet, the first step is transforming the header into an abstract representation, which normalizes the protocol representation. This approach ensures the compression process remains protocol independent. Once the scanner obtains the abstract header from the packet header, the next step is selecting the most suitable rule for compression. This rule is then passed to the compressor, which produces a compressed header identified by the rule ID. It's important to note that the Sheik standard doesn't mandate a specific representation for rules or abstract headers. These are application dependent, meaning a compact C implementation might differ from a Python implementation using complex structures. In this part of the course, we'll focus on the open Sheik representation. Let's examine an example. Below is a packet dump in hexadecimal. We'll use color coding to distinguish between IPv6, UDP, and COAP. In OpenSheq, the parsed header is represented as a dictionary. The key is a tuple containing the field ID and its position in the header, while the value is an array. The first element of this array is the value stored as a byte array, followed by the length in bits. For the version field, OpenSheq uses the field id ipv 6bear Since there is only one field with this name, its position is 1. The length of the version field is known to be 4 bits. The value is extracted from the header and represented as a byte array. Let's move on to the next field, traffic class. In OpenSheq, we handle it similarly to the previous field. The field ID for this is ipv6.tc, and it has a length of 8 bits. We extract the value directly from the header. The same parsing process applies to the flow label, payload length, next header, and hop limit fields. Let's focus on how addresses are represented. As mentioned earlier, Sheik doesn't work with source and destination addresses directly. Instead, it uses device and application addresses, which contribute to more stable rules. Each address is divided into two components, the prefix and the interface ID. In this example, the source address is interpreted as the application prefix, indicating downlink traffic. Similarly, the device prefix and interface ID are derived from the destination address. With this, we've completed the parsing of the IPv6 header. When it comes to UDP, the process follows a similar pattern. We assign port numbers to both the device and the application, considering the direction of communication. Now, let's turn our attention to COAP, up to the option field. The process is straightforward. It's worth noting that some fields have lengths of 2 or 4 bits. The most intriguing part is how the parser manages options. Recall that COAP serializes options with a delta type on 4 bits, a length on 4 bits, and a value. However, in the abstract header, this information is stored differently. The field ID corresponds to the type, while the variable length is stored in the second element after the value. For example, let's look at the delta type 3 corresponding to the URI host option, since that's the first option. This becomes our field ID. The length calculation is a bit more complex. When we see a D, it indicates that the actual length minus 13 is stored in the next byte. So in this case, the length would be 13 plus 1 equal 14 characters, or 112 bits. The value is then copied to the structure. For the next option, 
we have a delta type of 8. Adding this to the previous type, 3 gives us 11, which corresponds to a URI path. The field ID is set accordingly, and the length is 4 bytes size, or 30. Moving to the next option, the delta type is 0, meaning we're still dealing with a URI path. However, there's an important distinction to make. Since we've already encountered one URI path field, we need to differentiate this one. To do so, we set its position to 2. This numbering system allows us to handle multiple instances of the same field type. By assigning different position numbers, we ensure that each URI path segment is uniquely identified in our abstract header representation. The length is 6 bytes or 48 bits long. We've now reached the payload marker, 0xff, indicating that we fully parsed the co-app header. We don't need this value in the abstract header since we already have all the field. The remaining bytes constitute the payload. Now that we have our abstract header, it's important to remember a key characteristic of OpenSheq. Since it uses a dictionary structure, the order of fields doesn't matter. In fact, when displayed, the fields will appear in alphabetical order. But don't worry, this doesn't affect our compression process. What's crucial is that we've successfully associated each field ID with its corresponding value. And there you have it, chic lovers. We've accomplished our goal of constructing an abstract representation of the packet headers. This is a fundamental step in the chic compression process. I encourage you to experiment with the OpenSheq parser yourself. You'll find exercises available both in this MOOC and in the Book of Sheik. These hands-on activities will help solidify your understanding of the concepts we've covered today. In our next session, we'll take things a step further. We'll explore how to use this abstract header to select an appropriate compression rule. This will bring us closer to understanding the full sheet compression workflow. Yeah.